Welcome to Biohacking with Brittany, a podcast focused on holistic health, nutrition, biohacking, and more. I'm your host, Brittany Ford, registered holistic nutritionist and self-proclaimed biohacker. During the last 10 years, I've focused on healing my gut and hormonal issues through lifestyle changes, nutrition, and of course, biohacks. And now I teach others to do the same. I'm so excited you're joining me today. So let's dive right in. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Biohacking with Brittany. Today, I have a special guest with me. Her name is Hannah Roberts, and she works for a company called Nourish Well. Mm -hmm. My goodness. (laughs) (laughs) So she's all the way from Australia, and this company is like, I'm just obsessed with them because... Basically, we connected online and Mm -hmm. they sent me some of their samples of some of their amazing nutrient-dense products that we're going to talk all about. And I literally started using them every single day because they're (laughs) so good. And they just really meet the standards that I have for nutritional Mm -hmm. products and supplements as a biohacker and also as a nutritionist. Mm -hmm. And I just love them. Like I, it's not even a, yeah, I just love them. So (laughs) Nourish Well is a vegan functional food company. They deliver nutrient dense and gluten free products like Mm -hmm. a mushroom latte powder, which Mm -hmm. happens to be my favorite. (laughs) They also have a beauty nectar skin supplement that is really good as well, which we'll definitely talk about. Awesome. Yeah. And joining us today right now is Hannah Roberts. She's a researcher and a naturopath for the company, and she's going to talk to us all about this. So, Hannah, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So I just want to kind of go through Nourishwell, like mm-hmm. their history. So yeah. how did it come about? Why did it come about? Like, tell me everything. So it's a mother and daughter duo, and they've always been on the health side, love health, I've always been, you know, love, you know, just helping people as well. So we have a sister company, which is a much sort of a, a, they tend to be gluten-free, but not vegan. So mother and daughter duo, the daughter went vegan at a very young age and realized that there comes with a little bit of deficiencies when it comes to vegan. So they seen the gap in the market and realized that there's not a lot of vegan products on the market that's just going to help with your overall health. So it's not just for vegans, but we use vegan products, but it's just to help with an overall health really. So they started making all these products just for easy to have everyday easy products. And um, it have been open for about three years now. So it's really doing well. And a lot of people are now realizing the history behind nourish well and just loving it. And I'm so excited. That's awesome. Yeah. So I'd love to just like touch on that Mm -hmm. briefly, what you said about, you know, going vegan can cause specific deficiencies. And I've read about that myself and I've learned about that. So for anyone who is vegan listening or is thinking about it, Mm -hmm. what type of deficiencies do you typically see and how would you remedy that? Okay. So there is a couple. So generally the nutrients that you see are deficient in vegans very commonly is B12 and iron. Now this is simply because you take out meat and you get a lot of your B12 and you get a lot of your iron from meat. So when you go vegan, you have to be very careful in making sure that you get those type of nutrients in. Things like, you know, your greens contain a lot of B vitamins and iron, making sure that you have the vitamin C to help with the iron absorption. So putting things like lemon juice on your spinach so that way you are retaining a lot more of iron. The other thing that happens with vegans is that they tend to have what we call as low digestive juices. So these are the ones that break down your food. Because having meat, you need a lot more. But when it comes to breaking down vegetables, you don't need to break down them as much as you would meat, hence why your digestive juices decrease. Now, what happens with low digestive juices, it means that you can't break down foods as much. So you are not retaining or breaking down those nutrients that you get from your foods. So there's a lot of different ways that vegans can become deficient, but they are generally the ones that you see very commonly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've definitely read about those. So do you have specific products that target those areas? Yes. So we make sure, and there's a lot more products coming out. So we make sure that we see the whole picture. 
So for argument's sake, let's go on to our beauty nectar. We make sure that when it comes to skin, you have making sure that you have a good gut health along with those nutrients that specifically help with your skin. Right. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And I definitely want to talk about skin. This is a big area that I help clients with. Okay. It's also an area that I've had my own issues with Mm. over the years. It's just different things have happened. Yeah. And yeah, a lot of people are really sensitive about their skin as well because it's kind of what everyone sees, right? Yeah, exactly. So let's kick off skincare or skin health. Mm -hmm. What do you think that most people who haven't studied health get wrong about skin? Food. At the end of the day, what they're actually putting inside their bodies, they don't realize how it can affect their skin. The other thing is medications. Depends what medications they're taking or for argument's sake, if it's a contraception pill, then they're at it, you know, particularly a female, they have it at the age of 15 because they have skin issues and then at the age of, say, 30, they come off it and those skin issues are there. So I think taking some medications that potentially help for the time being, but once you come off, you will tend to see a lot of issues. But generally it comes down to food, I believe, what you're putting in your body, you know, making sure that you're getting particular nutrients that particularly help with your skin. But yeah, food, I think is the, food is medicine at the end of the day. That's what us as naturopaths believe. Yeah, I totally agree. So from that perspective, what type of food can we be incorporating daily that really supports our skin? Yeah. So zinc is a nutrient that's amazing for your skin. So things like your greens as well, um, they're really helpful for your skin. But fatty acids, things like fish, coconut oil, olive oil, avocados, they're amazing for your skin. They're probably the, the main sort of very <laughs> easy to have type nutrients from your foods and to incorporate every day. The other thing is actually water as well, making sure you're having enough water each day, two to three liters. A lot of people don't have that much. This actually helps facilitate nutrients or toxins, should I say, that are being, um, you know, bad toxins that this helps them get out of your system. Right. And in terms of food that we should be avoiding, is this just processed food or have you seen specific research that really causes skin inflammation? I think more processed foods to keep it easy. Definitely processed foods because of the high fat content, it puts issues on your liver, which means that if your liver can't break these things down, they get stored in your liver and then potentially then get processed through your skin because it's trying to escape somewhere and your liver can't break it down anymore. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. Processed food is so tricky and tastes Mm. so good sometimes, but (laughs) can really cause havoc on your skin in so many different ways. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. All in moderation, I say. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) And that's the other thing with vegans is that a lot of the pre-made, you know, fake meats and things like that, they are highly processed. And a lot of people don't realize that because they believe it's vegan. So that's also another thing that vegans need to be definitely careful of. Right. And is your beauty nectar supplement powder that you have, so how does it support the skin? Like what are the active ingredients in it that you really have seen in your research, like help Mm -hmm. your skin? Yep. So we have two particular ingredients in there called phytoceramides and hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is very well known in the cosmetic world. They've actually been using it a lot on, you know, cosmetic creams. They use it in fillers, but we actually have a food-based one. And in a lot of research, it's stating that we actually have this in our bodies. So it actually, both of those phytoceramides and the hyaluronic acid help they're already naturally in your skin, and this helps the natural production of collagen. So these are the main two ones in our formulation that really help moisturize your skin, make sure it's nice and plumpy, you know, because as we get older, we lose collagen. One to 2% each year, it decreases by the age of 25. 
So by having these two ingredients in there, it's just amazing to support your collagen production. The other sort of star ingredient that we have in there is a mushroom called tremella mushroom. This is known in centuries in China to help with its beautifying effects, and it can actually hold a thousand times its weight in water. So what that means is that it actually makes sure that there is water getting to your skin, which again, helps it go plumpy and just moisture as well. The other aspect that we have within our beauty nectar is gut health in there. So this makes sure that your gut is functioning properly. You are getting nutrients you need. You know, you're breaking down your foods properly. And gut health is highly linked to your skin as well. Yeah, definitely. I've, yeah, been down that road myself and helped clients with that as well. But just going back to hyaluronic acid for a second, Mm -hmm. it's so interesting that your supplement has that in it because I actually just bought a topical serum that is hyaluronic acid. And I know it's very popular and I'm like so late to the bandwagon now with it. But I had a few people reach out to me and say that it's actually better for you or produces better results if you take it internally. So Mm -hmm. Do you think it is better taken internally or should you be doing both or what have you seen? Look, you can do both. It's not going to be harmful if that's what you, you know, whatever sort of is easiest, I always believe for my patients, whatever is easiest. But it's, of course, internally is a lot better. There's only so much. Yes, your skin is the biggest organ, but it's only so much that it can actually absorb compared to you taking it every day. And there is the particular company that we got the hyaluronic acid from, they have done their own studies. So it states that it does wonders for the skin. But it, definitely internally because it, whatever you take internally, like I said before, it helps with your natural collagen production. So this is actually stimulating your collagen production compared to cosmetically putting it on top. It can only do so much. But that, in all in all, you know, you can still do both, but internally is definitely best. Yeah. I love that. You might as well just like attack the issue from both sides in my opinion. Exactly. And you know what? We're not getting younger, so why not? Yeah. Why not? Exactly. (laughs) So let's talk about gut health. This is one of my favorite topics. I've just had my own issues once again, and I just find that most health issues people are dealing with always come back to the gut. And Mm -hmm. the gut tends to so foundational in how healthy you are and especially with skin. So Mm -hmm. in terms of like the skin relationship to the gut, what types of skin issues do you see most common in relation to the gut? Like, is it acne or is it Mm -hmm. accelerated aging or what do you really see that is indicative of gut health issues? So it can be a bit of everything really, but the most common ones that I've seen when in my clinic, when I was doing clinic, is a lot to do with acne, um, psoriasis, dermatitis. So anytime that you see a skin issue like that, you always think the gut. This is because your bacteria in your gut can tend to get to your skin because of the bad bacteria, let's call it, is overloaded compared to the good bacteria, which the good bacteria is there to make sure that you've got a nice I always call it like a nice home. You've got to make sure that you're, it's not just about the bacteria when it comes to gut, it's about your gut lining and the functioning of your gut. So when I was saying digestive juices before, you've got to make sure that you've got enough digestive juices to be able to make sure that you have got a good protection and a good home for those bacteria to stay. The other thing is that, you know, sugar and high fats, the bad bacteria is actually feed off that. So by having too much high fatty foods can stimulate your gut, really bad gut health. It can lead to inflammation, which can then lead to skin issues more so with aging, but it can tend to then lead to, you know, dermatitis, like I said before, and acne. But it is just, it is so common. So many times, you know, I've, every time I have someone that comes into my clinic with skin issue, I always support their gut. Mm -hmm. Like where would you even start with that supporting their gut if someone came in with skin issues? Is it through testing or is it very personalized to the person? Like where would you start? It's very personalized. I'm not a big one on testing simply because I think if by the end of a consult, I have sat with that person. I have known their history. I know their whole story. I can understand the holistic and the whole picture. 
So why do I need to test? I can generally see symptoms from someone where as a test might not tell me that, but it doesn't mean I can't support that system. But when it comes down to gut health and supporting someone, it's honestly very personalized. It just depends on what is going on for them. You know, like I said before, if they've got something like leaky gut syndrome, which means that their gut lining in their walls is apart, it means that toxins can get through to the bloodstream. So if that happens, to me, I don't go probiotics because I need to support that gut lining and I need to make sure that that is being repaired before I go and put the bacteria because like I said before about a home if I don't have a good set boundaries and a good you know bricks to have that nice home there's no point in me putting bacteria in there because it's just going to get lost so it really depends on whether they've got low digestive juices what they're eating you know making sure that they are having the prebiotics as well so whether that be coming from food yeah it just really depends on the situation there's not one protocol. Let's put it that yeah. way. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And actually, when I, the reason I got into health in the first place about 10 mm-hmm. years ago was because I was having specific issues. My skin was okay at the time, mm-hmm. but I found out I had leaky gut. Yeah. And so I, and so many people do, right? Like it's so, so common. So common. So, common. so yeah. And it's just so interesting now. 10 years later and helping other people with leaky gut and just seeing their symptoms and skin is a huge one. It's huge. It's yeah, it's everything. And that's so interesting about, yeah, you said about healing at first before probiotics. Mm -hmm. Like I agree with that. And Mm -hmm. if anyone listening kind of thinks that this might be them just as a FYI, like the way that I went about it was exactly that. I healed it first through L-glutamine, which is an amino acid, and aloe vera juice. Mm-hmm. And that was for like, you know, I don't know, quite a while. And yeah. then it was fermented food, prebiotics, yeah. probiotics. So you really do need to heal the gut lining before moving forward. Yeah, 100%. And the other thing is, is most people will have their skin issues get worse before they get better. So once you start healing the gut and putting in probiotics and prebiotics, their gut is going to go in a bit of a, in an uproar, really. It doesn't know how to take it. So those bad bacteria that you have got in your gut, if you have them, and you're trying to repair that and get them better, they need to go somewhere. So you tend to find that your skin will get worse before it gets better. Oh, that's so interesting. Okay. So say somebody is taking some of your supplements Mm -hmm. and it's trying to heal heal their gut so that they can heal their skin. And then it does start getting worse. Like you said, how long is it going to get worse for? Like, and how do they know that this is temporary? So that is a very hard question. There is no particular like one month, two months, three months. Generally, you will see results after say three months, but they do say every year that you have had that issue, it will take at least a month. Now that means that month you need to be on top of it, you know, no, no lack thing about it. You literally have to do it if you want those results. So it depends on the situation, depends on the person. Yeah. That's so interesting. I've never heard about that timeline equation yeah. before. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. They do say a month for each year you've had it. Yeah. And I love that. Had, you know, issues for 10 years. Well, it's going to take 10 months at least. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it just goes to show you how complex health is, right? It's not a quick fix. No, not at all. And that's, you know, sometimes that is an issue for people because we're so used to medications that's like a magic pill and they will take that issue away and they don't realize that going natural herbs and all the rest, they actually get to your cellular level. So they have to actually get there first to make an impact. And once the impact happens, it's like I always believe that it's like a rest of your life change, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. Mm-hmm. You mentioned a mushroom, the tremella mushroom. Yeah. And wh- like I said earlier, one of your favorite products that you have is the mushroom elixir powder, mm-hmm. which is yeah. delicious. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I know mushrooms are quite popular now, but I think it's kind of overwhelming for some people who don't really know the differences between the different types and they kind of just don't really know where to start. So what do you recommend for that? Like where can people start when it comes to mushrooms? Ooh, that is a very hard question. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I guess they can do their own research and it really depends on 
them and their situation, like I said, you could start by seeing a nutritionist or you could start by seeing a naturopath and getting a specific mushroom for you. In saying that, a lot of the mushrooms are, they have their own specific job, but they're all very similar in the same sense as well. So they are there as an antioxidant. They contain beta glucans, which are amazing for your gut. These are the prebiotics for your gut. They contain vitamin D, which is amazing for your immune system. You know, you see a lot of studies with different types of mushrooms for different types of things, but a lot to do with the immune system, um, helping with the nervous system. You, Yeah, that's a very hard question. But by having a simple product like our shroom brew every day, as easy as just having like a cup of coffee, that's what we believe that the shroom brew is like, caffeine-free, gluten-free, vegan, but it helps with that coffee addiction I suppose it will help you get off of it and it is the exact same taste so sometimes by having just a simple product like that with the mushrooms in it might be easier because really the mushrooms on its own do not taste nice at all so that's another thing that people need to be mindful of as well is that a lot of natural products are not nice but you just have to do it (laughs) yeah yeah no I think you're totally right mushrooms can definitely play a helpful role in your diet. And they're not to necessarily substitute quality nutrition and meal planning and meals, but they're a supplement. They're an addition and they are nutrient packed and really just using a, you know, coffee substitute that's made out of a blend of mushrooms in your morning instead of highly processed coffee is going to make a huge difference, like long-term. Massive. And they do complete opposite things. You know, caffeine stimulates the cortisol, which puts more stress on your body. So we're constantly in that fight or flight mode when it comes to the nervous system because we are under so much stress all the time. It's just the way that our sort of society is now. So by having the caffeine or coffee, you have it because you want the energy, you want the alertness, but what actually does it put more stress on your body can make your situation worse. So by having these mushrooms, it actually supports your nervous system, reduces your cortisol, but still has a natural energy production for you. Mm -hmm, Exactly. And you don't necessarily want to be stimulating cortisol because that impacts your hormones and hormones impact your skin. So it's all related. (laughs) It is. is. It's funny how your body is all together and it works all together, but we don't Mm -hmm. tend to know that. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Exactly. So I'd love to dive into adaptogens. Yeah. And I feel like that word is kind of thrown around a lot now, but I feel like a lot of people don't even really understand what it means. So can you break it down for us? Yeah. So as the word says, it's an adaptogen. So it helps adapt you to your stress. So I always say as a naturopath, I can't take people's stress away. Sure, I can say, try and reduce it as much as possible. But at the end of the day, we need to work and we're a society that we're always on the go. So I can't take that away. So what I can do is support your adaptive phases. So what happens when under stress is that your adrenals produce cortisol, which cortisol is there. So first of all, your nervous system stimulates that you're under stress or you need to fight. So our daily stresses are jobs, making sure there's, you know, dinner on the table, your children, making sure you get to work. But back in the day, our fight was fighting a lion and making sure that we can hunt. So that is our daily stresses. So once your nervous system realizes you're under that fight and that lion, that bear is there for you to need to fight, we produce our adrenal glands then come into play and they produce what we call cortisol, which is a hormone, but it also produces adrenaline. So we have that constant adrenals producing that. So what happens is that eventually caffeine actually it stimulates that even more so. And like I said earlier, it can actually make your situation worse. What can actually happen with adaptogens is, like I said before, adapt you to your stress. This actually supports your adrenal glands to, easy way of saying it is sort of um, support your adrenals, but support that cortisol production and making sure that it's not being overstimulated. Like you said, adaptogens are so common now, but honestly, I think everyone should be on them. They are amazing and they work wonders. Right. So what are some types of ones that you commonly use and see a lot of benefit from? 
Yeah, so my favourite adaptogens are medicinal mushrooms are great. They are amazing. But my favourite adaptogen has to be withania. Now, the other word for withania very commonly known is ashwagandha. This is absolutely amazing. I pretty much put it in everyone's elixir because it works. It really works. The other ones are things like Romania or rhodiola. But honestly, withania has got to be my favorite. Interesting. I've actually never heard anyone call ashwagandha that before. Ashwagandha is its botanical name, but withania is its common name. So it depends sort of what college you go to and all of that. So whether it's a you know, an Australian thing compared to overseas. I don't know, but it's very interchangeable. Both words are very interchangeable, but a lot of the other adaptogens or herbs, they generally use their common name a lot. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I love adaptogens just because if you're making too much hormones, you're in a hyper state or you're not making enough, which is like hypo, they can help. So they balance you out regardless of where your body is. Mm -hmm. Um, And they just, they're really supportive in that way. So it's like you said, like literally anyone and everyone should basically be taking them because of our society these days when, you know, people are getting burnt out, they don't have Mm -hmm. enough energy or they have too much energy. Like, yeah. So they're just so supportive. They are, they are. And like you say, we're burnout. We are so, a society that you see burnout very, very common and people don't know what, you know, adrenal fatigue is. So what can happen is when I was saying before with the adrenaline and cortisol, eventually your adrenal glands just are fatigued. They're constantly producing this and they just, they don't know how to stop. And eventually that means that your adrenal glands get tired. And this is where you see that three o'clock in the afternoon slump because people don't have the energy because your cortisol isn't doing what it should. So by having an adaptogen, it can help make sure that your energy is there because you're not trying to burn out your adrenal glands. I always say they're like giving your adrenal glands a big, nice hug. (laughs) Aw. So if someone was going to start taking them, Mm -hmm. how long do you think it would take for them to notice a difference? Oh, it depends on the situation, but honestly, a few days. Sometimes I get patients that are literally a few days and they're texting me saying, uh, wow. <laughs> mm-hmm. and for some people, it depends on their situation, but it might be a week or, but generally I find them very quick fasting acting. Right. And then if you start to see a difference and you're feeling better, do you have to be taking them every day moving forward or can you kind of slow down and wean off of them a bit? Bit of both, and again, depends on the situation. So, I mean, like we said before, I think everyone should be on them. A lot of people tend to find that they get results and then they want to stop, and it might only be two weeks. That's supporting you for now, but it's not going to – your situation will only come back shortly afterwards because you're, you've are you got to support them and then you've got to make sure that they're functioning well as well. To me, it's something that everyone can take. Sure, you can wean off and come back when you need to to save a bit of money, and that way you're not taking something every day. You shouldn't have to rely on things. But then that comes down to also having different habits that are going to support that, like meditation or yoga or reading a book. It depends on the situation and what their meditative state to them is. But definitely something that people can have forever. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah, I really agree with like supplements, using supplements in a cyclical manner. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you're going through more of a stressful time at work or personally, and you're, you're having your mushrooms every single day. And maybe, you know, summer comes around and things are more chill and you no longer need them, but then you need them in the future. And I think Mm -hmm. it's kind of like cycling them is okay. And I also think just self-awareness, like, noticing like is your heart racing or like throughout the day like or are you like having poor posture at work and you're kind of just slumping around like Mm -hmm. becoming aware of how you're feeling and then using them in response I think is the best way to go about it definitely definitely and like we said they work within a few days so you know by having them just sitting in your cupboard for you know a couple of months they're still going to be fine after that to take Like you said, everyone's traumatic situation is different. Some people can go through a really, really traumatic situation, but that might not be as traumatic as what someone else might believe. 
So it really just depends on what's going on for you. But our trauma is pretty much happening every day because of what, as a society, that we now do. Yeah, exactly. So lastly, if someone is listening to this and they're super excited and they want to get started, how or which product do you think someone should start with from Nourish Well, just Mm -hmm. based off of everything that we've talked about? I mean, Shroom Brew, definitely. It's definitely (laughs) my favorite simply because of what it does as well. So when we were talking about caffeine and coffee before, everyone loves coffee. And don't get me wrong, I love coffee. I still drink coffee, but I have my shroom brew in the afternoon so that way I can still have that pick-me-up and it can help me. I honestly notice it within a few minutes of having it. If I'm on my computer doing research and I find that my cognition is not there or my alertness, I'm not you know, listening or I'm off with the fairies a bit, I will literally have a shroom brew and it will help me get back. So I just think medicinal mushrooms are amazing. They are something that everyone can take every day without any issues. But just having that alternative to help with your alertness, help with your cognition without having that caffeine hit and then that crash. So shroom brew, hands down, favorite, get on it, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's so good. It was, oh yeah, I'm out of it and I need more because I I miss it. (laughs) Then I'll have to get some more for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, Hannah. I It's so easy to talk to you and I learned so okay. much and I just like love your supplements. Amazing. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So where can everyone connect with Nourish Well, social media, all that? Yeah. So we have a website, nourishwell.com. So it has all of our supplements on there, all of our, you know, lattes, but we also do blogs and we also do different recipes on there. So you guys can go on there, make our different recipes and we write blogs about different health issues and things like that. The other thing is definitely social media. So we're on Facebook and Instagram and we're trying to be more, having more communication with our customers and our followers as well. So definitely all of those you can get on and have a look at all of our products. Amazing. Awesome. I will connect all of those links into the show notes so people can connect with you guys. Yeah. And thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. That was awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in today. As always, feel free to screenshot this episode and tag me if you'd like me to respond. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you have a question about your health, my DMs are always open and I'm currently taking new clients. Thanks and see you next time.